The first B is direction. I sit down with the young man and try to see what direction his life is headed. As the coach, I try to create upward mobility in his life. He must be aspiring for something in his life that is positive. Desire is the second D. Desire is that burning force within that drives and drives a man to whatever he is trying to accomplish. I urge the athletes to incorporate desire into their life. They must ask, how bad do I want it? If the desire is there, you will see it. You can see that inner flame that burns and burns into the job is done. Dedication is the third D. I stress to the young men that this D should be incorporated into their lives because there has to be personal sacrifice in order to achieve in athletics as well as life. There has to be commitment to excellence. Sometimes that means saying no to social events as well as other temptations in our society. Are you willing to make personal sacrifices for the good of the team? Are you willing to give up those parties to practice for perfection? Determination is the fourth D. To me, determination is a strong work. It means strength to withstand. I'm not sure what Webster says about determination, but to me, it means holding firm in one's conviction and yielding not to temptation to things or other persons. The quality of being resolute is fascinating to me. That is why I demand that my athletes be determined. Can determination be taught? Yes. It must be cultivated in order for it to grow. Discipline is the fifth D. What is discipline? Discipline is being able to follow rules and regulations of a team as well as society. It is doing things when told to do them and doing them correctly. I demand discipline from each and every one of my football players. This D is most essential because it aids one in becoming successful in athletics, business, and all walks of life. I always tell them there is one thing all successful people have in common, and that is discipline. Also, I point out all failures have one thing in common, and that is a lack of discipline. I stress discipline to all young men because I feel it is the cornerstone of a foundation that makes them champions on and off the field. Dependability is the sixth D. Dependability is essential in my sports program. I teach my young men this one thing. They can depend on me. I must be able to depend on them. Having the quality of dependability is absolutely necessary in athletics and in life. Can I depend on you to do it right every time? Dependability means others can trust you to come through. I stress the athlete must be dependable to his family, his friends, and most of all, to himself. Durability is the seventh D. Durability means being physically and mentally tough. It is absolutely imperative in football to be tough every day. To have a great football team, your players must be durable. If they are not tough, they will not be able to execute. Sometimes the athlete has to play with pain. Some athletes can, others cannot. It is up to the coach to realize each player's durability level. The youngster who cannot play with pain should not be made to or allowed to. It can be very damaging to the player, to the team, and to you in your quest to build character in the young man. I personally do not think it has to do with character in a young man. I personally do not think it has to do with character as much as it does the ability to endure pain. You don't force your ability in a player. You accept it when he has it. Defense is the eighth D. Men, I am not talking about defending a football goal or football play. I am talking about defending a philosophy. You teach him that he has to believe in something and stand for something. If not, he will fall for anything. 
You teach him there may come a time in his life when he has to defend his religion, his morals, his family, or his race. These are the things you teach him to defend. You teach him to defend them because he believes in them. And that is all that matters. And he believes in them. We also tell him as he becomes successful, it also can become very lonely. All great men must stand alone sometimes. He must have the inner strength in his quest for greatness. And if he is ever to become great, he must be able to carry on and to understand the directions he is going and the mountain he is climbing. If he does not know where he is going, he will never know when he gets there. He must decide what he will do and will not do. It is okay to stand alone. If you believe in something, defend it. Use logic in determining your beliefs. Whatever philosophy you develop, be sure it is well founded and worthy of defending. Then defend it.